In today's video, I'm gonna explain how you can use walking to go from looking like this to looking like this. And I'm gonna explain actually how there's new, better forms of walking to reach your goals. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. And over the last couple years, some of my most popular videos, and I've made 1,300 of them, have been about this idea of walking. And it's something that I stumbled upon while trying to lose body fat in the most effective way possible. Losing body fat comes down to creating a caloric deficit. And believe me, there's a lot of research that shows that this way is the best, that way is the best, but there's also some anecdotal evidence, meaning real world experience that can kind of help us learn this. And I came from the world where science showed us all the answers. And sometimes when you're looking at something that scientifically is better, it's actually not the best approach because it doesn't take into account the whole picture. So I want to talk to you about various forms of walking now. Let's talk about the caloric deficit. Where does that start? If you have no idea how many calories you're taking in on a daily basis, that's where it starts. So don't think that you're going to lose all this body fat and just be active. You're going to have to understand a little bit of what you're doing. I use an app called Fat Secret. I track my calories. Hey, if I'm not making the uh, progress I want to make, I can look at my numbers and I can say, hey, it's because I overate or it's because I underperformed this week. So you need some accountability there, but the only form of cardio that I use to get this physique right here, okay, the last time I dieted down for a bodybuilding competition was walking. But there's a caveat to that. It wasn't just walking like you would stroll through a mall or go outside and go for a walk, right? I increased the intensity over time. I made a video describing how I use walking and how to adjust your walking over time. But some new research has come out, some topics like Nordic walking, ruck walking, and I want to explain to you guys how you can use walking to better reach your goals. And I want to explain to you exactly how many calories you burn using each form of cardio. So let's talk with the most basic form of cardio, just walking. First of all, there are other benefits just than calories burned. Okay. I know we look at movement now and say, oh, my watch says I moved this much. I burned this many calories. That's great. But we live in an era where mental health and the focus on that is at an all time high walking is a wonder, wonderful form of self-care, okay? Taking a walk, collecting yourself, it's gonna help lower your blood pressure, it's gonna help improve your body composition, it's gonna help your digestion, you get those enzymes moving. So walking just has so many benefits for our overall well-being. So when we can do something that's gonna have multiple benefits, why not do that? How many calories do we burn if we just walk out these stairs, go downstairs and go for a walk? 260 calories per hour, there's probably a bunch of different figures on how you can figure that out. They have to figure out the weight of the person, the rate of the speed that they're walking. But let's just say, all things considered, it's about 260 calories per hour, okay? Now, if we add an incline to that, like you would, let's say if you live in a hilly area, or perhaps if you walk on a treadmill, you can increase the incline, right? If you're walking around 3.5 miles per hour, you can increase that up to 420 calories per hour. Now. I can confirm this. I like to walk on an incline every single day. If I'm doing it for maintenance, I'm just doing maybe 15, 20 minutes. If I'm trying to lose body fat, maybe 30 minutes up to an hour, but I love walking on my incline. And sometimes my walk sessions can get up to between five and 600 calories burned per hour based on the calculations the machine gives me. The next form of cardio and some research came out about this recently that's probably hasn't hit the mainstream yet, but I think it will. It's called Nordic walking. So in the Nordic countries, when they walk, they use these sticks, right? Now, that makes sense. If you're walking without moving your arms much, there's not a lot of upper body movement going on. But if you're adding some movement like this and you're holding a stick, now you're getting the upper body involved and burning calories. So if you do something like this, you're gonna burn between 375 and 425 calories per hour walking flat, right? Now, the biggest trend that I've seen and the question that you guys ask me the most is what about walking with a rucksack or a backpack or a weighted vest? What does that burn per hour? Now I have some feedback on this because although my research shows that you burn about 650 calories per hour doing that, that's right. That is insane that it's that much higher than the other modalities of cardio. But I also want to remind you guys the big trend for years was high intensity cardio. Why? Well, with high intensity cardio, you do these all out bursts between 10 to 20 seconds of sprinting, right? And then you rest a few minutes in between, and then you do another sprint and you do that five or 10 times. And that only takes you half the time of walking an hour. You can do all that in 30 minutes and maybe do a couple sprints 
and you'll burn between 400 and 600 calories. And everyone said, that's it, that's the ticket. The problem with HIIT cardio is that there are some adaptations to that that I found to be difficult to deal with. Most namely, I was starving all the time versus when I started doing the walking, I was less hungry. When I get up in the morning and do my cardio first thing, I haven't had anything to eat. I'm just able to go for a walk and when I'm done with that cardio, I feel great, I'm not hungry, I sit down at work, my brain's awake, my body's awake. If I were to get up and do some HIIT cardio, it would be much different. And so I've experimented with these different modalities and although high intensity cardio gives you the most caloric expenditure for a short amount of time, is it the most conducive for your goals? Can you perform HIIT cardio? Are you athletic? Do you have the equipment available? Perhaps, perhaps you're joining a gym. Anybody can walk, anybody can go get steps. And I hear people all the time say, well, why do you go to a gym to walk on a treadmill? Why do I have a treadmill in my office? Because sometimes it's 108 degrees outside where you live and sometimes it's eight degrees where you live outside, but it's always 73 degrees in my office and I've got a TV right in front of me. And that's what I found that I enjoy. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna experiment with these other modalities, guys. I'm gonna find out what works best for me. But you have to remember that the big picture, something like ruck walking, the issue that I've had with it with my clients that have done it in the past, the sack that you're wearing can actually start to hurt you, okay? I've had clients complain that they got sore trapezius muscles, sore shoulder muscles. I've actually had them also complain about starting to have some back issues. So it all comes down to the context of how you're performing your cardio, okay? Walking is the lowest form of entry of exercise. It is great for injury recovery. It is great for mental health. How you increase the intensity of that exercise, whether you're walking by Nordic walking, ruck walking, incline walking, incline and speed. Heck, maybe you can put on a ruck, put on your Nordic sticks and walk on an incline and you're burning all the calories you want to, but you have to understand that the calories that you burn through your cardio, it has to be matched by what you're putting in your mouth. Are you actually creating a caloric deficit or are you just exercising so hard that you end up supplementing your diet by reaching for more snacks throughout the day? What is the best form of cardio? Ultimately, it's gonna come down to what works best for you. Now, I coach bodybuilders. You guys see all these trophies? Hopefully you like my new backdrop. I'm trying to, trying to upgrade my office. I've moved, this is my new location. I've actually hired someone who's gonna come in and help me as a production manager, so that's coming. But the whole point is that I coach bodybuilders and the focus of a bodybuilder athlete is that we're going to the gym to train to put on muscle, right? I wanna build muscle. What cardio best suits my lifestyle if I'm in the gym five days a week pushing heavy weights? Hit cardio was not very conducive for me, okay? Nordic walking might not be great for me, why? Because it's putting stress on my spine. As a 46 year old lifetime natural bodybuilder, I'm trying to take advantage of everything I can. Health and my ability to be in the gym has what's kept me going for so long. I'm not looking for injuries. I got injured doing HIIT cardio. I have not tried ruck walking, but I've had enough clients report back to me with injuries that it's not something I'm focused on. So for now, I find that walking, incline walking, even other steady state modalities like stairs, elliptical, bike, are great for burning the calories, but also making sure I have energy in the gym. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you tomorrow.